Hello and welcome. Uh, this is my second, this is going to be my second tribute on International uh, Women's Day. So thank you for joining me. Um, again, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I apologize. I've, I've been working on my book. I've been working on my projects. So I haven't had, I've been able to do a video for a while, but uh, today, uh, it's all about, uh, women and, and the women who inspire us. So, uh, I received this from a YouTube creator studio, this initiative, uh, she inspires me. I thought it was a really great idea. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump on here. This is my second video. My first video was a tribute to Grace Randolph. Um, and she's she's tremendous, by the way. Go ahead and uh, take your time to to go check out Grace's channel. Grace's channel is called Beyond the Trailer. Uh, but yeah, this is my second tribute, and it is for Ellen DeGeneres. Um, and I know Ellen is is well known. She's already made it, um, but that does not mean that she doesn't deserve a tribute. So, Anyways, let me let me just talk about Ellen and and why she inspires me and uh, and what's so great about what she does on uh, YouTube. So here's Ellen's uh, channel, obviously the Ellen Show. And going back to the '90s, I remember when Ellen came out as uh, as gay, and I remember how controversial you know it was at the time. It um, it's interesting, I mean, looking at it back now, uh, of the closed-mindedness of the 1990s. Uh, what I can tell you about that era, the 1990s was not my favorite decade in America because, we, you know, Americans were so obsessed with their image. Americans were obsessed with ethnocentrism. We we thought that we were the center of the universe. By the way, I apologize if you hear my cat yowling uh, through this video. She loves to ruin my recordings. Um, but I'm going to crack on and just uh, just keep going, as they say in uh, New Zealand. So anyways, the, the 1990s, uh, America had an attitude of uh, ethnocentrism, and, and it was in love with its own, um, just an image, just an American image of you know it's great to think of that shining city on the hill and you know to to think of your country as as among the best but really in the 90s there was an arrogance in the country that um that really stunk you know for lack of a better term and ellen was the victim of that in a lot of regards so she she's taken a lot i mean she's taken a lot of heat over time uh, she very easily could have crumbled, uh, just fallen apart and, and, and uh, went and, you know, cried in the river about everything that's ever happened to her. But she's not, she's not built that way. And I really admire Ellen. I mean, she's got great taste in women. She, um, you know, her partner, Portia, is, uh, is a very impressive woman, very intelligent, talented woman. And she's gorgeous. You know, I got to admire Ellen is the type of person she'd be the you know, kind of, for lack of a better term, she'd be my bro that I'd go hang out with and have a beer. Um, just because I, you know, I respect her so much. And for me, uh, respect is not gender specific. So when I say my bro, um, it could be a man or a woman. It doesn't really matter. Um, just like Grace, I respect Grace a lot. Uh, the exact same way I respect uh, any of my male friends or, or anyone else that I've ever looked up to in life. And the same is true of Ellen. Um, Ellen, Ellen has a really sad story. I mean, her, you know, her childhood was rough. Uh, her parents were very cold and she has taken that coldness and reversed it, um, in her life. It's very easy, you know, for me, for someone that, uh, that struggles from depression. And of course I'm a writer, so Every <laughs> every writer is going to struggle with depression. I think every artist, every human being, right? Let's let's be real. But it's very easy to get into that pattern, especially when you grow up in a in a environment that's very cold. Where my understanding was that Ellen's, um, you know, parents didn't take a lot of time to uh, to 
to get her care. You know, if, if she needed medical care, they were just not very responsive and, um, and they weren't affectionate in a lot of ways, you know, so she, she really had to take, um, you know, what's, what's that phrase, the famous phrase, obviously the Beyonce phrase of, um, you know, when life gives you lemons, give them lemonade or make it make lemonade rather. Um, and I know Beyonce didn't create that phrase, but she, she definitely made it more famous. Um, Ellen has done that. Ellen has taken the, the rough things that, uh, the life has given her and she's made something beautiful. And I love this shot of her, by the way, on the game of games where she's really smiling and having a good time. Um, because it does, it keeps reminding her, me that she, she overcame what could have become a, a pattern of, uh, of constant depression to become not, not very successful, you know, forget about the success and the money and everything. And that's great. And, and I'm very happy for her in that regard, but that's not why I admire her. I admire what she has overcome and I admire what she continues to overcome. So I'm going to, um, get, get, sorry. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you some videos here. The, again, the cat is wanting to be part of the show and she's mad. She just jumped down. Um, so I'm going to show you two videos that I really admire her for. And one is Ellen had responded to a pastor. This pastor had said that she just wanted to celebrate her gayness and watch, watch how much of a boss she is in this video. I've told you this before. I don't usually read anything about myself. I don't look at the tabloids or the internet unless it's about me being pregnant and then how else would I know? <laughs> you gotta find out. Uh, but I heard there was an article written uh, about me and I would like to address it right now. It's a pastor who wrote an article for the Christian Post where he accuses Hollywood of having a gay agenda and said that Ellen DeGeneres celebrates her lesbianism and marriage in between appearances of guests like Taylor Swift to attract young girls. Okay, let's just break this down. First of all, I'm not married. I'm married. That's all. Yeah, so again, this is, I think this was about two, 2015. She's taken flack. Um, from this pastor with his his anti uh, lesbian uh, or anti gay uh, rant, and and he's you know throwing up some inaccuracies about her, unsurprisingly. But uh, anyways, let, let's go ahead and continue. And Larry, I don't even know what it means to celebrate my lesbianism. I mean. <laughs> Well, I guess I do. It's like that. It's there. <laughs> that was epic. That was so fantastic. And she knows she nailed it. Look at that. Look at that smile. That is so worth it. For me, this is one of the great moments in history. Um, because it, it comes on the heels of, I, I think, it was around the mid 1990s where she she came out as gay and um and it it was rough i mean she, you know her show had gotten canceled um everyone was uh, you know they were they were taking her down for something that was none of their business and you know i mean what somebody does in in the bedroom uh you know which is probably 0.1% of their life should have nothing to do with who they are you know i mean it, it's i look at intimacy as like a like a massage okay if, if a massage were more intense and more you know uh entangled with closeness and relationships that's that's what intimacy is you know in my mind so to take something that is so um, trivial and and to try to twist it and to try to make it into a dark thing. One, she's in a, a committed relationship and she's been with the same partner for a long time. Now, if she wanted to have multiple partners and she wanted to play, I don't care. I'm not her priest. Um, but it's admirable and it's difficult to to be dedicated to the same person for a long period of time. So you really, you've got to give props to her and Portia 
for having stayed together for so long and for continuing to challenge and inspire one another, um, you know, over the years. But this is great. This image, again, getting back to this, um, 20 years later. So this is 2015. I think it was the mid nineties when she got persecuted and now she's having the last laugh. I mean, it took her 20 years to really get the last laugh, but she nailed it. And when she did this, everyone, everyone was having a great time. I mean, she shut the guy down. I'm not saying that he didn't have anything to say after this, but you know, th this was the end of the fight. And if, uh, if he was smart, he would have walked away um, tail between his legs and minding his own business um, in terms of intimacy, because that 0.1% of your life that you spend in the bedroom um, having fun has nothing to do with who you are, the, the content of your character, what you've done for people, uh, who you are as a person in the world, um, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's really time. I've, I don't have you know, have, I've not had hatred in my heart for, uh, gay people. Uh, it's two consenting adults doing whatever, you know, whatever they feel like doing, which is freedom and which is the basis for, uh, America. Anyways, second thing I really love, and this, this came about, let's see, this was five months ago, uh, a photo of, uh, Ellen and George W. Bush. So I want to talk about something that happened this weekend. I know it's Tuesday. Sometimes I like to ruminate on things all day Monday so that on Tuesday you, you hear about it. Um, so uh, this weekend I went to Dallas uh, for the Cowboys game. And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks. And um, it may not seem like a big deal for a celebrity to attend a football game, but uh, I never leave my house. So it is a big deal. I, I go through the drive through at Wendy's, so I only have to see one person. I'm that kind of person. So so she's going to a football game. She runs into George W. Bush. There were 100,000 people in this stadium. Beautiful stadium, by the way, that Dallas has. Um, so Portia and I were invited by Charlotte Jones. She's the daughter of Jerry Jones, who owns the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, we went because we wanted to keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, so we... All right, we're going to take some points off of the Joneses joke. Love you, Ellen. Still admire you, but not, 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 not low-hanging fruit, but picking fruit off the ground at that point. But I get it. The temptation is there uh, to to make those those types of jokes. But, uh, anyways, this is about to get really good. You have to sit in this very fancy suite because, you know, he owns the, the whole place. So his suite is, is fancy and he's got fancy friends. And I don't mean fancy like real housewife fancy. I mean like fancy. Look, this is I took a video of who who was next to me. Now oh, that's fantastic. And you know, he's uh he he's really hamming it up. They're having a great time. Uh, I love that shot of him just just being ready for it. He knows it was going to be a big moment, so that was really cute. Yeah. Fancy. So so that was Portia, and that was Charlotte Jones. Uh, Portia was talking to, and George W. Bush, and then in front of us was the tallest man in the world. And, um, so I've got to say, uh, when we were invited, uh, I was, you know, I was aware that it, I was going to be surrounded with people from very different views and beliefs. And I'm not talking about politics. I was rooting for the Packers, and uh, get this, everybody in the Cowboys suite was rooting for the Cowboys. And so I had to hide my cheese hat in Portia's purse. And um, don't get me wrong, I, I, I like the Cowboys. So this is great again. I mean, she's she's not going to be pushed around. Uh, she has her own opinion. She stands um, firmly for what she's all about. Uh, and again, I mean, I, obviously, she's this is very tongue in cheek where she's talking about the team that she's supporting. You know, not being the home team for the stadium uh, in, in which they're having the party. Um, but but it's gutsy. I mean, you got to admit the. Um, the owners, I believe she said at the beginning, and, and uh, hopefully I'm, I'm not misinterpreting this, but that it was the, um, the owners of the team that invited her to the game. So when you're rooting for the team 
the opposite team and you're sitting in the uh the team owner's box that that's hilarious and yeah she may she may be rooting for the packers or she may just be playing it for laughs who knows but what i do know about ellen and what i do really respect about her is that she just holds true to you know what she's saying and in this in this economic or, or rather in this political climate that we have currently um where there's so much uh two-faced um just just awfulness uh, i mean toxicity and you really don't know what someone stands for and people just change their position um they're constantly pivoting i'm gonna pivot i'm gonna pivot i'm gonna pivot i'm i'm for gun safety but i'm i'm against guns but i'm in into this and you know you just really can't tell who someone is but with ellen you always know uh who she is you always know what what uh she's going to provide and um you know what she stands for uh and she's not going to be browbeat by anyone she's not going to be pushed around she's not going to be um you know held down by by trends or a slave to um what what hollywood wants her to do or uh, or for that matter what uh politics want her, wants her to do but in this case um she's getting backlash not from in, in the first example she was getting backlash from a a conservative pastor so you know that one was that was fun for her obviously to stand her ground uh and and that was her entire audience was with her you know her she she's more on the liberal side of things or or at least you know by by the nature of her um her essence is more on the liberal side of things but in this case people were upset because she was being friendly with george uh george w bush um and here she comes out and defends herself this time she's defending herself against her own fans which makes her a really great person i mean that's incredible when you can stand up to the opposition and when you can stand up to your own fans and when you can really genuinely be your own person which is hard to do in hollywood you know um she's been tremendous and keep in mind that you know i had mentioned that she's the type of person that i i recognize her as a really cool um type of a you know for lack of a better term a bro that i would go hang out with and have a beer and and what i mean by that is i respect um i respect the way that she's treated portia and i respect the way that she um because i i look at her very much as uh as a, a spiritual brother and so looking at the way that she treats her women and looking at the way that she handles her relationships is a big deal to me i also feel that if i introduced her to uh to someone that i was dating that she wouldn't hit on them which is which is huge I mean, you, um, that's what you need in someone who's a genuine, uh, uh, brother to you, spiritual brother to you is that you could trust Ellen to not, um, you know, hit on your, uh, on your girlfriend or, or your partner. Um, even if the, you know, whether the temptation is there or not, you know, is, is left to be, uh, is left to be said, but she doesn't seem like the type of person that would do that. And there are a lot of people um, that I have seen do that. So in terms of who she is as, as an entertainer, I really admire her as a person and as a spiritual brother. I think she is uh, incredible the way she conducts herself, the way that she respects boundaries and the way that she holds her position, you know, um, as, as a, you know, a, a spiritual brother, she, um, you know, she protects what's hers, but she does it very lightly. And, um, but she always holds her ground and, and, and she does so gracefully. That's the other thing. I mean, there's a lot of grace involved in the way that she's doing things and look at her hand gestures. Just look at the non-threatening, uh, postures here. Um, that's always a great sign. And this is, this is really hard to do, by the way, my own body language would not be this non-threatening um you know especially in a situation where people are questioning me i think a lot of us would be folding our arms a lot of us would have kind of a harder face a lot of us might even have kind of a harder tone 
So think of how difficult it is uh, to come out this way and just to be this fluid. It's, it's got to be exhausting for her because she's putting a lot of effort into saying it's not that she's trying to be perfect for everyone, but she really wants to convey the right message. And not only with the words that she's saying, but with her body language, she wants to be real. And that, you know, that's why I wanted to give her a tribute. I wanted to give her props. I know it's easy to, uh, to do a tribute for someone that, um, to do a tribute for someone that is, uh, that has already made it. It's already famous, but she still deserves it. I mean, you know, maybe it's a needle on the haystack, but I don't care. People need to know, um, what she's about and why she's important. Um, so on international women's day, Ellen, thank you much for inspiring me. Um, thank you very much for all of your art, uh, your artistic contributions for making me laugh so many times over the years for standing up to these, these bullies that don't really understand, um, life as well as they should. And hopefully they're learning from you. You know, that's, I, I really hope that they're learning from you and that they take away, I think you are teaching them in a lot of respects, how to be a better person. And in my opinion, um, and this is just me, when, when we die, I think we go back to a place where um, it's so evolved that intimacy is not needed, right? I mean, I think of, when I think of the afterlife, I think of not a, so much physical interactions as as much as people will enjoy each other so much on, on such a high level that the physical intimacy will no longer be necessary. So, you know, for us as, as brothers and sisters and, and what have you, um, it's just all going to kind of uh, mesh into a heightened level of enjoyment of, of the essence of what one another um has become you know and to celebrate our works and to celebrate um you know the things that we strive for and and just to continue to lift each other up to lift one another up in this life so uh anyways again thank you ellen for all your contributions to not only to the arts but to society thank you for holding your ground thank you for showing me how to be a good man thank you for showing me how uh, a man should treat a woman uh, that he cares about. I mean, the way the way that you've treated Portia uh, over the years, and the way that you've held your relationship together, I, you know, I haven't always been a uh, someone who thinks of uh, relationships, of long term relationships, as as healthy. And and I've had kind of a cynicism there. But when I look at what you guys have had and what you've been able to keep together, um, I've got to respect it. I've got to think, you know. Um, this is possible and it, and it takes away all the excuses that I would give myself not to, to have a committed good long-term relationship. And secondly, uh, I do respect uh, the way that you treat other, other people's uh, ladies when they're on your, when you're on your show, you know, you might, you may have that little comedic flirtation, but you're always very respectful of people's uh, wives and their girlfriends, even though the temptation may be there at some times. And I totally get that, um, you know, how, how difficult that could be sometimes, but I'm really glad that, that you are who you are. So thanks again, Ellen. Uh, this is the end of my, my second tribute for International Women's Day. Ellen DeGeneres, uh, please share this with the hashtag she inspires me. And let me know in the comments uh, about women who inspire you. Again, this is a YouTube initiative. So we're talking about YouTubers, female YouTubers that inspire us. So again, thank you everyone for your time today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe as always. Um, I have uh, projects that are, that are getting wrapped up and I'll give you news on those uh, as they come about. So thanks again for your time. Have a great day. Bye.